room for a treat today. I think what we're looking at in today's video is the most inspirational technique analysis videos that I have ever done. Now we are looking at Gerard Abayus's 160 kilo clean and jerk. Now Gerard is from Cameroon and competes in the under 73 kilo class. Before we get into this technique analysis, I think it'd be fair for us to talk about training environment. So often people put so much emphasis on needing the perfect barbell, the perfect set of weightlifting shoes, or the perfect platform that's pristinely flat in order to be able to achieve their greatest lifts or tip PBs or in order to be able to perform. However, Gerard shows us that no matter the temperature of the room you're competing in, how straight your barbell is, how new your equipment is, it does not matter and it does not affect your ability to be able to succeed in the sport of weightlifting. And that's why I think this video that we're gonna be doing the analysis of today is so bloody inspirational because this man lifts in what I can only imagine is one of the toughest conditions <laughs> that weightlifting has to offer. Don't worry about chalk, there's no chalk here. There's probably dust that he's rubbing his hands in. Don't worry about a flat platform. He's lifting on a bit of what looks like a wooden door potentially and a couple of bits of rubber. Is it stopping this guy execute absolutely impeccable technique? No, it's not. So we're gonna dive into this analysis. We're looking at a 160 clean and jerk. One of the things that really in this video that we're gonna look at is pretty impressive because it's not something that you'd see day to day in most Olympic weightlifting videos. First thing that I want you to take into consideration when we look at the setup here is where the feet are pointing in the setup. Now you'll notice that Jar's wearing the same shoes as me, great choice. He has slightly turned out toes in the setup position. As he initiates this first phase pull from the floor, what you'll see is there's quite a lot of body movement before the lift starts moving. And he's actually got quite a bent arm in the initial first phase of the pull. You will see quite a few lifters do this when they're doing a clean pull. However, I always like to opt for a very straight arm in the initial setup for the clean in order to take as much distance and create as much distance between the head and the barbell as possible. This means that when you start pushing with the legs in this initial phase of the floor, there's not so much body movement, but instead the bar's the first thing to move in this first phase. The other thing that I want you to take into consideration here, which I don't see very often, but Jared is looking at the sky when he's in his first initial phase of the lift, which is unusual. However, the bar does stay super close and he uses his legs really well and maintains, above anything else, a neutral spine position as he gets to the knee. And this is really good. No matter how different people's setup positions are or how they pull from the first phase up from the floor, if the angle of the back remains the same at the setup when we start pulling and then when it gets to the knees, it means that we're using the legs well in the first phase of lift, which is ultimately what we want to see happening here. Let's just zone in and look specifically at the arm for a minute. I'm gonna get rid of some of these lines so it's a little bit easier for us to take a look at here. So if we look specifically at the angle of the arm here, and I'm gonna draw some lines over it so we can kind of tape it here. What we like to see, or what I'd like to see if someone's gonna pull with bent arms off the floor, although I don't like recommend it, is that these angles must remain the same. So the arms are not bending any further during the pull. Now you can see that these angles are getting a little bit worse all the way until we get to now above the knee, where he's beginning to row the bar in as it comes past the knee. As a result of this, and what I generally always see happen, is the shoulders will get behind the bar or start to get behind the bar before extension. This is quite an unusual clean technique. Some lifters and some really great lifters lift with this technique, but you'll see how he'll stay really far on flat feet a lot longer than most people would. And he's almost gonna flick the bar now out of the hip crease. Now, the reason why I opt against this style of technique is because ultimately when we're doing a clean, we need to get good maximal height on the bar um, during the pulling phase. But you'll see that during extension, there's a lot of movement again with the body, but the bar doesn't gain a massive deal of height during this bit, only a very small amount of height. But not only that, the legs at this point do not fully extend. So when we think about him full extension on a clean, we'd want to see extension at the ankle, the knee and the hip. We don't really see that on this particular lift. But not only that, like I said, the shoulders are back behind the bar. So let's see how this plays out. I think regardless with this technique, what we'll see now as we come into the receiving position is some foot movement. There's a minimal amount of foot movement. But due to his ridiculous mobility and front rack, 
you'll see that you get super low into the receive. So if I draw a line right, ballsy clean. If I draw a line as lowest point of his catch and the height that he's getting the bar to in the pool, you'll see that there's still enough height at the end of his pool in order to move around underneath it. So regardless of whether this technique's not the most clinical that we've ever seen, he's still in the most crucial moments of the lift, i.e. the top of the pool, got enough height on the bar and he is moving, keeping the bar very close to the body at this point into the receiving position, which is great. As we transition now into the catch, let's talk a little bit more about this. When the feet stay super close, this relies massively on ankle range of motion and hip mobility in order for the torso to stay upright in this position. And you'll see how the eyes are still pointing up to the sky at this point. One thing that I would say is super beneficial about keeping the eyes pointing up in the received position or in the catch position is that the elbows will generally follow suit with where you're looking. So by keeping the eyes up, the elbows are staying up nice and high and you'll see how the humerus here is almost parallel to the floor, which is ideal practice really when we think about receiving position for the clean. I wanna talk a little bit about what's happening here in the catch. And then generally for me, I will always teach my athletes to maintain a full grip as best they can when they're in the receiving position for the clean because if they let the bar roll out into the fingertip, this puts a lot of excessive pressure on the wrist, but also from an efficiency standpoint, it will sometimes cause the bar in the receive to crash. However, for Gerard, he's actually receiving that bar really well. It's not crashing on him too much because he's actually using the momentum to stand straight about the hole. So he's getting away with it for now. Would it be more efficient if he kept the hands in? Potentially, because what needs to happen when you stand up out of the clean is we obviously need to get the bar back into the palm of the hands in order to be able to jerk it. Because if Gerard was to be jerking with the bar in the fingertips like this, it's obviously gonna fly out of his hands when he comes into the overhead position. But here's what's really interesting, and this is something that you really only see from African lifters, in my opinion. I don't see many other nations do this. But what you'll see happen here, from this periphery, It'll take a really nice long time, and then he'll do this obscure adjustment of the hand. Now this is extremely difficult to do, but what you'll notice is he's quite broad across the shoulders, and he's actually got the bar resting here inside the collarbone. Now I don't know if this is something that's genetically different, different from African weightlifters to other lifters in the world, because I've tried to do this, and it's extremely difficult to actually keep the bar resting, especially 106 kilos, resting on the collarbones here whilst moving the hands without it falling off the shoulders. So this is certainly a technique that they must have practiced a lot. And I think will require a huge amount of thoracic extension here in order to be able to maintain a good platform here with the chest. But nonetheless, with that barbell resting right on the collarbones, you'll see how then the adjustment of the hands take place. And then the bar is moved into a full grip position for the jerk. Whereas most people will generally do that in the adjustment out the clean to make the full grip. They do it slightly differently. It worked extremely well for a lot of African lifters and a lot of Cameroonian lifters that also do this. And what I do really love to see at this point is what's happening here is that the bar is, like I said, in the palm of the hands and we have a nice consistent angle at like 45 degrees of the elbow. This makes it really easy for you to drive through the bar on the jerk, which is one of the key reasons why I think African lifters will be doing this. It's, it's again why you see this great dip. Elbows have not moved an inch at this point. The feet have stayed flat. The knee is tracked perfectly above the toe into the bottom of the dip. And now we're gonna see an incredible drive with the legs before the feet are moved. The reason why this is textbook is because what you'll see here is we've gone from start position of the jerk to bottom of the dip of the jerk, which is here, and then back to that top of drive position and it looks like the exact same thing which means the legs are all doing all the work here before the feet start to move and then we see this amazing split into the receive could there be a slight bit more extension um, on the jerk probably yeah because you'll see how we don't really rise up onto the toes here and this is partly the reason why i think when he's going into a split position that the hips are seeing a little bit further back behind the center line of the jerk. What I'm looking for when I'm looking side on at a lift is that if we were to drop a straight line from the barbell down, I'd like to see it splitting through the quadricep. 
So if we would kind of like draw around here, we should see 50-50 either side of the line, which I think from side on, we'd probably struggle to see that. Because that's obviously the main point of support when we're in the split position. But nonetheless, we're seeing a nice soft back knee and the heel staying up of the floor with both, point, both toes pointing straight ahead. And again, a very solid lockout position. Now, all in all, this was an absolutely incredible lift. Uh, 160 kilos is no mean feat, and especially for a 73 kilo lifter at that. Again, for me personally, I hope you guys enjoyed checking out this technique. Slightly different from what we're normally looking to. But I think above anything else, we should all be taking a huge amount of inspiration from the adversity that Jared obviously goes through to train on a daily basis in the heat with not the best equipment or any of the support that a lot of other elite athletes get from around the world. But yet, nonetheless, this is not stopping him chasing his dreams and his goals. So absolutely incredible, bro. I hope you enjoyed the technique analysis. Guys, if you enjoyed this analysis, don't forget to like, share, comment below. Let me know what you think of the review. Recommend someone else for me to do a review of. And if you'd like me to do this on you as well, this is something I do on a weekly basis with my elite one-to-one -one clients at the lifting zone. If you wanna inquire about working myself and the team to level up your Olympic weight of thing and start pursuing your goals, then again, hit the link below this video. You can book in a call and we can discuss your goals further. I can tell you how lifting zone can help you succeed. Big love guys, don't get like, share, subscribe. See you in the next episode.